Hello and welcome to Ascari here in Spain. My name is Michael Mann from Bennett's Bike Social. Join me to assess the Metzler Sporttech N9RR. So Metzler have been making motorcycle tyres for 128 years now, but it wasn't until 2013 when the German firm got involved with the modern day British road racing to prove themselves. They've tasted victory at the Isle of Man, at the Northwest 200 and the Ulster Grand Prix combined no less than 58 times. So we've no reason to doubt their ability to produce some top spec sporty rubber, right? So, the Metzler Sporttech M9RR. Better all around in terms of mileage, dry grip, lap time, consistency, handling, and wet weather performance. New compounds and layout of those compounds, plus a whole new carcass construction, has led to a 5% increase in effectiveness of that contact patch while at lean. Uh, I spoke to the head of hypersport development for Metzler, Matteo Torquiana, and he told us it's an evolution. It's a step forward for M7, it's a multiple test winner all over the world, and the big effort in the development of the M9 was to overtake the M7 in all areas, street, racing, sport, and touring. As with the popular predecessor, the M9RR is aimed at a range of riders from the likes of the Yamaha MT07 and the KTM 790 Duke, all the way through to the Yamaha R1 and the BMW S1000RR, for example. And that begins to explain the versatility of the M9RRs. They've been designed to comply with a wide range of riders on a wide range of uh, bikes on a wide range of conditions. They're only available in a 17-inch fitting. There's three sizes on the front and nine on the rear. An attractive lineup in the pit lane, the new BMW S1000RR, the last generation Honda Fireblade SP, a Yamaha R1, a Ninja ZX6R, alongside a BMW S1000XR, and a KTM 790 Duke. So there's plenty of choice with which we could push the M9RRs around that two and a half mile dry layout that mixed banked corners, elevations, hard acceleration areas, and fast progressive turns as well. Joining me here on this Metzler Sporttech M9RR launch is Matteo. Matteo, hi. Hi. Welcome. Thank you very much for joining me. So M9 is the transition, it's the development from the very, very popular M7. Is that correct? Yes, it is correct. It's an evolution, a step, a step forward towards the, the M7. It was a multiple test winner in Europe, mm. but all over the world. And then uh, the, the big effort in the development of the M9 was to overtake the M7 not only in one specific area, but to enlarge the radar chart of performance in all the area. So towards the, the racing street uh, side from, one, from uh, one side, but also from a sport touring side from the other. Mm. Because what is changing is not only the product, but also the market that is changing. So we want to offer a super sport product for several kinds of bikes that are not only the super bike, for example, but also in terms of naked, maxi from, from any displacement, the, the crossover, and everyone wants to use the bike in a sporty way and also every day. So with uh, several different conditions in terms of temperature and operative uh, mm. condition. So we're here in Ascari and we've, uh, we've, we've been doing a road ride and then we're track riding, yes. but there's a, there's, a, there's a great breadth of motorbike here. Right? We've gone from KTM uh, 790 Duke and the Yamaha MT-07 through to uh, the big sporty uh, hypersport bikes yeah. like the, the, the new uh, S1000RR. So it's a tire that will fit a, a broad range of bikes, right? Yes, this is the goal of this product to be uh, ready and suitable for such a different kind of bike to, to offer the same uh, performance even with different construction of the bike, in different conditions, different usage, because what the, the customer wants is a super sport behavior. So that's the reason why we, we fix this uh, performance of the M9 to be ready for such a big, uh, a, a wide range of, um, of motorbike. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about a, a tire that will operate in, in all conditions? Yes, from wet and cold condition until uh, the a track session, for example. 
So you've got stability and you've got durability on the road, and then you can you can easily you know, ride yes. your bike to the track and then and perform on track as well. With yeah, the, yeah, yeah. You need to take in mind that we are speaking about a super sport tire, not a racing one. But of course, the, the the goal was to combine all the performance that you need in everyday usage, so from the wet and cold temperature until a, a dry standard condition, but even with the high operating temperature that we have in track. That's the reason why the development was focused on mixing together all the performance in terms of uh, um, grip, handling and wet, mm. because the, the, um, the target is to be ready and suitable for such a big uh, performances. Mm. Do you have a, an idea of the kind of bias between road and track performance? Is it sort of 80-20 on, on yes, towards? Yes, approximately is 80-20. You have to take in mind that the, what I said before, it's not a, a racing tire, it's a super sport that we can use also on the track session, but it's mainly a street tire. So mm. That's the reason why we are focusing this way with such a big uh, um, application of uh, also of technology mm. in the mm. development. But is it right that uh, the front and the rear are both dual compound? Yes, they are a dual compound layout with full silica on front and rear size. The rear size has a cap and base construction mm -hmm. of, the, of the dual compound with a soft shoulder compound that is an evolution of the one used in the M7 and the center one that is a full silica that was not in the, in the M7 in the content is 24 points higher than the M7. The introduction versus the M7 is also the dual compound on the front, mm -hmm. where the center is a NAR compound for everyday usage in, in, in a normal way. F full silica again, evolu uh, evolution of the compound of the well-known M7, while there is also a, um, a new compound on the shoulder. Full silica with high melting point raisins that are giving a benefit in full lean, giving confidence sure. and dry grip out of the corner and, and in full lean. And especially they are matching Night people performing rear tires out of the corner because the front is the one that are giving you the the line. Mm -hmm. So this is the the reason why we put inside the, also the front the the dual compound. The matching of the dual compound is even improving when you're speaking about the carcass that we have behind below because the carcass that we use in the M9 is a stiffer carcass mm -hmm. uh, made up by a very stiffer cord, 25 points higher than the M7, but with lower end count. Where end count means the number of cord that we have in a fixed uh, quantity, in a fixed dimension, so for example, 100 millimeter. The combination of these two effects, higher stiffness of the textile element and uh, more space for the rubber, is giving you a very higher stiffness when you are stressing the tire at high deformation. That means hard ending, so the performance in hard ending. But, are balancing very well the stiffness, giving you at low deformation in soft handling, even a very, a very well riding pleasure. So in terms of performance on the tires, you've been doing a lot of testing at several different test tracks. Yes. And the evidence uh, that was reported in the press conference was incredible performance increase. So it's something like 3.4 seconds per lap faster over a five kilometer yes, uh, track. Yes, so five kilometer lap in Pergusa, that is one of the, our uh, track for uh, developing the tire, like the M9. We test there, uh, strictly comparing the M7 and the M9 the same day with the same bike that was an Nas Miller R mm -hmm. BMW, with the same rider, of course, in the same weather condition, so everything fixed just to compare the tire. We have a difference of 3.5 seconds on a 5.5 kilometer lap, more or less. But the same we found on wet when we, do, when we went to another circuit. It was shorter because wet, okay, as a shortened uh, lap. And we found almost two second benefit compared with the M7 in a 44 second lap. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah, this is incredible and was also confirmed by, by all the values in the telemetry because we have both on dry and wet mm. and we have seen uh, mainly two, 2.5 higher lean angle, both in wet okay. and even in dry. In Pergusa, due to the construction of the, the circuit, we were able to reach 51 degrees of lean angle, 2.5 higher than the M7 one, while on the wet we were able to reach 38 degrees mm -hmm. of lean angle. This was incredible. You, you mentioned it a little bit earlier on about uh, the development of the tire from the M7 uh, and, the, and specifically around the development of, of the bikes, of the machinery, because they're coming now with more torque, more power, more yeah. electronics. This is, uh, presumably you've got to, you've got to create the compounds that will match those forces that are going into the bike that you know because an everyday rider can be a bit more aggressive now with the throttle more aggressive with the yeah. brake uh, and all those electronics are calming everything down but of course the tire is the part of the machine that that suffers the most yeah you, you touch a very good point in terms of development because this is one of the biggest effort that we have in the development because uh, we cannot have a tire for a single bike we need to cover several bikes several yeah. applications 
on, on different construction of the bike. So one of the main point of the tires is to be suitable for such a big kind of bike. So this is the reason why we work not only on the tread compound, for example, but we need also to match everything in terms of profile, of the structure and so on, to, to balance in, in the best way that we can the matching of stiffness and damping. Mm. Because in this way we are predictable. And predictable means what to work very well with all the electronic systems mm. inside the bike. Thank you so much for your Thank time. You very much. Let's go and see how we get on on the circuit. It's an abrasive looking surface and there's plenty of room on track, which is kind of the perfect components to get an idea of how these new metals were going to perform. With that 80-20 ratio ringing in my head, I took it steady for the first few laps, but once it warmed up, it was knee down, it's a lot more confident, you could start pushing even the 1,000cc bikes under a, you know, a bit more strenuous acceleration. I was particularly enamoured by the predictable nature of the lean. From upright over to my maximum lean angle was smooth, progressive and fast as well to get through that transition. It was really quite plush over the circuit surface. The ride was very, very smooth. On the brakes, and again the tyres, particularly in the front, were very, very stable. I trusted their predictive nature. That said, unfortunately, after you build up lots of confidence, sometimes failure comes as the next step. But I'm just coasting around the left hand, and I'm about to feed in the spot, and all of a sudden, what? The rear let go to the right, and I was almost heading moonwards. To remind you, it's 80-20 in favour of road use. I'd be wary of using them in conjunction with 200 odd horsepower over six sessions in the fast group at a track day. But if you were on your litre sports bike roaming around the A and the B roads on a Sunday, they're right up there with the very best in this category. For the road, they're smooth, they're supportive, they're trustworthy, and I completely get why the M9RIs are so biased towards quick road riding. They could take a while to, to get up to good operating temperature on the roads, but I felt really, really comfortable on the tyres. The roads selected were a nice mixture, mainly second and third gear mountain passes, but braking and turning in and accelerating away felt very comfortable. A proper UK road and track test later in the year will offer us a, a more realistic view of their durability and of their performance in more homely conditions. And I could probably say that the opportunity of wet weather testing was cut short as well, and it didn't give us a chance much to really test the tyres in wet weather. So overall, on the road I felt very confident in the product and I would commit without hesitation to every corner. The arrival tyres more suited to a more track bias type of riding mix. But if the majority, if not all, of your miles are going to be on road and at more than commuting pace, then the new metal options are going to be a very popular choice.